Hi, I'm Peter Kleins, and in the before time, I ran the Writer's Coffee House at Dark Delicacies in Burbank, California. Now that we're all social distancing, some friends and I are going to try and answer your writing questions here online. So ask away. This one isn't really from anybody, but it's a topic that's been coming up a lot lately, um, which is money and how writers get paid. Uh, and I just thought that would be a cool thing to talk about. Or, or how much writers don't get paid. How much writers wish they got paid. The American writers versus Canadian writers just learned <laughs> earlier this evening is different. Right. Writer no, James no, no, no. versus don't, writer don't reality. American writers, <laughs> writers everybody, everywhere else. Also, let's be honest, TV writers. Mm. Oh, yeah. All other yeah, writers. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, we should probably YA define that then. Great advance yeah. I learned this because week. the what? The YA writers they have a very different class of advance. They do. That's I, I this whole I don't know about how many of you have been following the publishing paid me. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. I, honestly, yeah. it's been eye opening for me in in both ways. Hmm. Like that, there are people who wow, you're making a lot more than I thought, and got a lot more, and there are some people that I am shocked like. That's all like, you made? Seriously? Oh, yeah. So. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. If you and this won't be a depressing like topic at all. No, no I, at all. Well, but I think, I mean. It's important that we have this conversation, I it think, is. for everybody to yes. know. Because you know, if we don't, if, <laughs> I mean, if we don't, if we don't have any kind of transparency for this sort of thing, you get new writers coming in and they're getting fleeced because they have no frame of reference. Yes. Yeah. I think it's, it is something that this is a, a method of getting paid, or I guess a pay structure, that most people just never encounter. So the whole, the whole idea of, let, let me put it this way. When I got to go from being a very small press underpaid author to being a big five author, I had so many misconceptions about how things would, would transition and the difference it would make. And I had all, I knew how publishing worked, believe me. And then when I started finding out, like, no, actually it'll be this, no, it'll be that. I'm like, what? Really? What? So, yeah. and and I, it, and it there are be, things I wish I'd known sooner. Yeah. And it can be a very opaque uh, system, especially for people who are, you know, because, you know, some people who, you know, the, the difference between self-pub and traditional is extremely stark on this one. And sometimes, you know, you might be, you know, if you go on various forum, forums, some information is presented as absolute fact that might be kind yes. of super wrong. A little skewed a little. Yeah, yeah. I, not so much wrong as very skewed, I think because is probably a good way to put it. Moderately incorrect. Moderate. Yeah. <laughs> Alternate facts. There you go. <laughs> Yes. I, well, I think I, I think what it comes down to is uh, personal experience. Yeah. So and so, I, I well, I got yeah. this. So this is how it all works. Well, I got this. This is how it all works. I, I do know. Shameless name drop. Uh, I think a friend of mine was like a self pub author who then got an insanely good traditional publishing deal based off like his self pub cred. Mm -hmm. And for a while, he was still good. Well, was that easy? Just self pub, and then you'll get a six digit contract. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that happened to the Martian. So, you know, it worked for him. So, why can't it work for someone else? That's it. Let's count. Let's count. It's, it's the like three or gambling. four people it happened for. Us. You know, everybody thinks, oh, well, if I keep rolling the dice, oh, I got, I got a bad number, that one. And I've had four bad numbers. So, this one, this is going to be a good number. Yeah. You, it's, it's also. You don't get how this works, do you? <laughs> It's also interesting because this this uh, that um, publishing paid me um, tr uh, tag was also really interesting because writers don't like to talk about our hard numbers either. I mean, this no. is not something we talk about at bars. We don't talk about it at cons. I mean, we tend to be extremely we like we're so like you know almost kind of like we're all pretending to be waspy um new englanders even though i sort of am one slightly Ditto. um we, we are very <laughs> like ooh, ooh, let's not talk about that mm -mm. well that's what well, i think like, that very is gauche. very gauche do I, not mention numbers i kind of wonder if it's even a slightly different aspect which is 
maybe this is the West Coaster coming coming out of me and, you know, the Hollywood it's sort of, you know, on that West Coast thing. But it's the fake it till you make it. And oh, yeah. writers, some writers, not all writers, but some some writers um, in that mid-list range, you don't want to admit how much you're making because if somebody decides that, Oh, they're they're lower down the chain. Oh, only that? I oh, I, they were. Why do I pay well, they attention must not to be you? A, I'm, yeah, you know, you must you must really not be a good writer, and it really has nothing to do with it. Mm. But I, yeah, yeah, I'm I not think... sure that's even a West Coast thing. I mean, certainly, you know, there, yeah, you know, I mean, there are people at cons who you run into who are clearly trying to, as soon as they meet you, they're trying to kind of grade where you are on the food chain. Yeah, there, and it can be. be very strange social situation. Yeah. Okay, so so here's a test. What was your last advance? Hard number. Actually, look, can I tag on and, to that? And before before answering, Shoot. how comfortable do you feel answering? I actually don't think I can answer for my last advance. That's okay. I, you can go back. Okay. To the no, last, no, I can understand. Well, yeah. One that you can talk I, about. I think I would have yeah. to go back like a couple books. That's okay. For it. But um, I'm also in a weird position because, well, let me start with this. I mean, in all fairness, my first four books, the total advance for my first four books was five grand. Guys, I think we need to rewind. We haven't explained what it is. We haven't explained this stuff. Yeah, yeah. that's that's true too. Yeah, okay. let's let's get let's, our terms back, back, back. and okay. which one, what what kind of writer are we talking about? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so let's uh, what, say what is all this? Well, okay, yeah, inside say, baseball stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. So, if you're a traditional published author, does not necessarily mean big five. It just means you are with a a a separate entity as a publisher, who is they're going to be your conduit for money, uh, publicity, marketing, all of that. That they're going to have one way or another their name on it, whether their name is Random House or Commuted Press or uh, Bob's Books, Bob's Books, Evil Girlfriend Media. I'm trying to think of like every little, like and, smaller press, big press, everything I've worked, you know. And by traditional publishing, we mean that the publisher has taken your manuscript, they are paying the outlay for publishing, yes, binding, editing. Mm -hmm. At art copy. Cover art, this everything. is part of what yeah. comes with traditional publishing. You are not paying a cent ever to you them. Should not be. Money paying. comes yeah. in your direction. They have taken on every part of the publishing process. You produce manuscript. They produce book. Yes. Yeah. Nightshade was another oh, smaller God. publisher, oh. and we should probably talk about them yeah. later on. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. That does that's, have to do with money too. Yeah. But yeah. That's yeah. later on. Yeah. That might yeah, that so might be a whole separate discussion. I, I think that <laughs> that's and, its own episode. And a yeah, couple but others this, like uh, we, we could, and, we could yeah we could probably yeah. do like a separate thing at some point about we've talked about the basics now let's talk about things to avoid. <laughs> exactly. So um, when we say traditional publishing, we mean this structure specifically. Yes. Um, so I think probably one of the the first things we need to define because I know I see people who don't seem to understand this is an advance um an advance is not the idea a lot of people seem to think is like an advance is a payment that like they're buying your rights um which is not what this is basically literally an advance is an advance payment that you've made a deal with your traditional publisher for whatever terms your contract has and your contract your publisher is saying well here's the deal you're going to get and i'm, and I'm pulling numbers out of my butt but you're going to get let's just say for easy math this is very unrealistic no one needs to make comments anywhere <laughs> you're going to get 10 percent of every book sold because we're getting the other 90 to make up for publicity binding marketing art all that um but we have such faith in this book, we're gonna give you a bunch of that money ahead of time. Like we're gonna give you a payday loan basically. Um, and that's what your advance is, that you're getting 10% of every book, but they say, we're gonna give you a thousand, 2000. What's that Mr. King? We're gonna give you 6 million 
ahead because we're so convinced of how how much money this is going to make. Um, except, and, I'm I'm going to jump in. It's not do. really a loan. It's more like an escrow if you were dealing in real estate. Yes. Oh, that's a good way to yeah. put it. That's, that's a very good, good way to put it. Yeah. 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 Well, I, it's it isn't a loan. They're they're fronting you the money. That it's this kind is money of like a bet. They yes. are betting yeah. that yeah. you're this is, this at is least stake that they're... this number. And that's that's also a good way to put it because I know one thing my agent talks to me a lot about. There there are different feelings about advances, like high ones, low ones, whatever. My agent is a big fan of large advances because as he puts it, that forces the publisher to have more skin in the game. Mm -hmm. You know, if they're only giving you a five hundred dollar advance that's somebody's lunch budget for the month. You know, they're not going to worry about making $500 back. If they give you 500,000, they want to make sure they that. really want to make sure they get that money mm -hmm. back. Because that so. money is yours. They, <laughs> also, as long as you fulfill the, your agreement with them, they can't ask for it back. They can't come to you and yes. say, you know, two years from now, Peter, the sales are low. We're going to need some of that hot money back. You're like, yeah. no, that's mine. You made a bet. Yeah. Right. And that's just why money. it's not a loan. Right. Exactly. Yes. And they it's, can't, I think they can't ask for it back as long as you fulfilled your part. Yes. Which is another big myth that mm -hmm. they'll give you this advance and then in two years they'll want it all back. Oh, they yeah. can want it all they want. It's yours. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's although, in my bank there, account. So, exactly. um, although but there was also, a famous case oh, recently. Go ahead. There was a very famous case recently. Um, it was the author of Pride, Prejudice, and Zombies. That guy. Mm. That guy. His advance um, was requested back for one of his other series. Crap, it my did, mind so it occasionally happens. Oh, oh, but that that had the extenuating circumstance of they had it was paid in advance, but he wasn't able to produce a manuscript that met the criteria that they wanted right that yes. they wanted yes yeah, so, yeah yeah so they couldn't come to agreement because they were just like dude you took too much of this other book right and that's what and but that's what brennan said you yeah. as long as you yeah. meet your responsibilities you turn in a manuscript you accept edits whatever yeah they're not going to come and say mm -hmm. gosh gosh steven we need nine thousand back because the book didn't sell in the first year like they they gave you this advance yeah. the advance is if you do your job the advance is yours exactly yeah. you know? and yeah. i think if it's also important to, criteria, oh, i think it's also important to keep in mind that the advance is sometimes the only money that the author is going to see i yes. bet usually in, in a lot of the, cases yeah. most don't earn out so. I, that's another I, thing we need to define is what earning out is yeah. yes. well i think probably that's a good thing to end advances on that i think a lot of times Definitely the big five, not as much smaller presses, but I think a lot of the big five, I know they do math, that they sit down and figure out, okay. They do math. They, no, they do. What should this, <laughs> mathematically, yeah. what should this advance be? <laughs> that, that they want to sit here and figure out how, like, realistically, how much is this book going to make? Because the other yeah. thing is if we sit here and, and run the numbers, that they're making 90, we're making 10, percent again in our idealistic simplified thing okay let's let's just say steven congratulations you just got a fifty thousand dollar advance and you're making ten percent off every book but the thing is they're making 90 so that really they're going to make back their money for the cover art their money for distribution their money for that and that fifty thousand dollar advance they will make that money back before your 10% adds up to the 50,000. Yeah. Cuz what happens that, is and that's what the math is, calculating yeah. that point of how much do we think it's going to sell so we know we'll make our money back. Exactly. If they you do that, that's a bonus. If if the if the author yeah. makes it, that's a bonus, yeah. but So Stevens 50,000 are in it's all in his hot little hands. The day huh? that that book gets published, he's got fifty thousand dollars. Well, in his hand. well, by okay. The time hang it's on. Published. But I'm going to explain that you know how we are, you know, the, the, <laughs> how that ten percent works. So then, for every book, so every so Stephen had that money. Every copy of Stephen's book then that sells, his 
ten percent um, mm -hmm. eats away at that fifty thousand. So yep. essentially, he has to earn out. So until Stevens ten percent of the books earn fifty thousand plus one penny, Stephen doesn't see any more money from that book. It may never earn out, in which case Stephen still has fifty thousand dollars. Right. But if it what, the day it makes that one penny, now it's earned out, and now that ten percent that previously had been eating away at that fifty thousand, that is now what we call royalties, because that one penny, Stephen's going to get a check. Te technically, that one, one penny. penny. Yeah. Technically, it's been royalties all along. It's just exactly, been royalties yes. that are paying off the advance. advance. Yeah. Yeah, on but when royalties. we say we're earning royalties, that means that you've earned out, yes. and now you're getting a check like every, like twice a year. It's kind of it's Which, always kind of fun. Sometimes it's, four it's, times a year if it's audible. Well, it it, it depends on a lot of yeah, things. Like and, and also yeah. with uh, uh, with the advances, you don't get all the money at one time. Yeah. Oh no, yeah. no, you, it's, know, you it's get cut into pieces. And and that's I think another big misconception of oh you got this fifty thousand. It's like no, no, you got probably right. got it broken up into three things. Thing. Right? It would yeah. be fifty thousand if they got gave it to Stephen for one book. Then but, he'd have that fifty thousand in his hands on the well, day. Well, but no, not even that though, because what will no, probably no, no, happen no, no, is no. you'll get seventeen well, grand on signing. Right. Yeah, exactly. Give you another yeah, seventeen you grand get, on like, delivery. You get the third on and then signing. On publication. You get a third right. on everyone yeah, agrees to get it, and then everyone agree, and then on that, you can also get some monies too. Like when I sold my trilogy, two of those books were not written, like not even a little. So they what they did is my first payment was really amazing because it was a third for book one a third for book two a third for book three on mm -hmm. signing yeah and those were books that didn't yeah. even exist yet but yeah. i didn't get the rest of those monies until i delivered a book to manuscript then i got my next chunk of money then book two got published i get got my last chunk of money on that so technically i had signed this contract that was gonna that was offering me like i don't know what it was was it twenty seven thousand dollars it was pretty sweet three books um but it was it was this amount of you money you just made so but, many people listen to this feel bad now I'm for, sorry <laughs> but i was really proud i actually ran into that when i when i posted something on that publishing you know the the, the pay twitter yeah, uh, hashtag seeing. and and that was good money yeah but i but i got a couple people pinging me going Oh my God! I feel horrible for how much money I'm making. I had no idea people were making so much more than I am. I think that's why we need to talk yeah. about it more too. Yeah. Typically, exactly. Typically, the only person you talk yeah. about this with is your agent. Like your yeah. agent has more of a bigger picture than you. That's also the nice thing is agents, because then they can talk about. They it. get you more money. They get you more money, and you can be the nice person. Like, oh, my talk talk agent is just she's yelling with you because you got to deal with that person later. Yeah. But, but yeah, so it's kind of, it, it goes in those chunks. So like you might sign the contract, but you don't have all the money in your hands. You might, it might be three years or more. Like I think John Scalzi's talked about this with his advance. Mm. Yeah. Which is like yeah. a 10 year contract. It's a 10 year right. contract, which yeah. is still amazing because that's money you can make. It's yeah. money just waiting there for you to achieve it. No, as long as he so keeps I, writing, he, he yeah. knows he's he get, got money yeah. to bring it. Yeah. yeah. I have a great way of explaining this to okay. new authors about how the payment system on the advances work. Well, I, and so everybody, the previous publishers... 20 minutes has been useless. Yeah, just listen. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to make a note down look, in the description. I'm excited. Like, just I'm excited. Skip, minute skip, 22. Skip to the 21 minutes. excited. <laughs> and, you know, um, Go, publishers sorry, can't trust sorry. us to finish anything. They're, they're yeah. not wrong. <laughs> No. They're not wrong. Not we, wrong. Writers so. have a long history of taking money and spending it and then never handing anything and freaking in. Out. Or freaking oh, out. And then... Yeah, yeah. So publishers have learned from this and um, that's led to the, we'll give you a little bit now. And then once you give us a manuscript, we'll give you a little bit more. It's and like then a thrill once of cookies, the actually. Book, yes. Yeah. Once the book comes out and you don't screw it up on social media, we're going to reward you again by giving you more of the advance. Actually, uh, I, and you, you brought up a great point. And this is my random question sort of for all of you. Because now I'm wondering, 
when they're making those advanced calculations, you know, big press, small press, whatever traditional publisher you're with, how much of it do you think is based off their impression of you personally? I wonder I'm, if a bit, because they've got to look at sometimes just, people's just track extent. records and be like, yeah, exactly. There are famous examples who we're not going to talk about by name of people who screw who have screwed the pooch. Yeah. And well, just I'm, yeah. I'm whatever curious. reason could not do it. If how, they got a further uh, deal, that would be definitely like <laughs> how many how many of you talked at any length to your editor before you signed a deal? Because I know actually when I when did. my when I what got I my agent. Did. And he took my books to to Random House to Crown Publishing. I actually talked on the edit on on the phone with my editor Julian for probably three hours oh, wow. before we wow. even decided let's go into business together. And it was just random stuff like, "What movies do you like? What's your general work day like? What's your just?" You know, I did get the impression like they they do suss you out a bit like. How serious is this person? Is this a fluke? Is this a flash in the pan? Or are they going to be a workhorse for us? Yeah, you know, I mean, they do have to assess that to a degree. Yeah. Yeah. I, with, the with, um, stuff you have done. Yeah. I, I ended up dealing with the Canadian branches of Random House and Simon and & Schuster. Uh, and then I eventually, with my first series, I ended up talking to some of the American, um, I worked with, the, with an American editor for Simon & Schuster. But, um, yeah, they, they spoke to me at length on the phone. Um, it, it felt to me like an interview for a job. Like we talked about the book. We talked about what the series was going to do. But, you know, okay. now that you brought it up, Peter, that's a fantastic point. Like it felt like I was interviewing at a research lab or for, a, you know, an executive position at, you know, um, a, a biotech company or something. Like it was that kind of a format, though a little more artistic because we were talking about zombies and adventure stuff for me the uh, uh, experience was kind of both ways because yeah it was that hey can we work with you and me going are you somebody I actually want to be tied to for however long yeah for the next decade yeah. or hmm. you know just it, it is a mutual decision like you don't have to sign a contract and it's not necessarily the only one you're going to be offered either so there is a lot of, is this going to work? I mean, there's always the pressure of, I would like money. I would like to see my pretty book on a pretty shelf. But is this going to work for me? In the same way that talking to agents, you have to figure out if this person's going to work with you well. You know? If, if the editor says, you know what I really, really like is if this book was something that's 100% not can you make that happen? That is really a, a good flag to like. Than a, mm -hmm. Yeah. I, let me ask you another question. That I guess this is just more of an opinion thing for all of you. Because I know uh, I have dealt with a bunch of small presses, you know, when I was starting out. And even still, I, I do so with small presses. Um, the editor, one of them, was very big on this whole thing of they didn't pay advances so authors could start getting money faster. Mm. And mm. on one level, I kind of see the logic of that. On Personally, on another level, like we were talking about, the, the advance, even if it's 500, 500 bucks, 1,000 bucks, two grand at a small press, which would be fantastic, um, that's like your guaranteed money. Yeah. So... I don't know. What are your, your thoughts on this? Have you, or have you I'm, encountered I'm mixed this? on that one? Because I, th I think it, it comes down to, okay, what's your guys' track record for actually selling books? Um, this is one of the things uh, when, you know, eBooks were just, just starting and a lot of that, a lot of thing that, excuse me, a lot of what was driving that was the erotica market. And these things were selling like just, amazing you know yeah. and, and you so you could take a, a pretty it was a pretty good bet to say yeah sam hain i go with them they'll give me money as i'm selling books is a pretty good bet because their track record up to that point had been really good um 
at the same time, I like having, you know, a check. <laughs> I'd also kind of wonder about what their books look like. If they can't afford necessarily to give me, you know, even a thousand bucks up front, then is it possible that they are literally just jumping from lily pad to lily pad? Hey, you mean like nothing? Nightshade? Like so many. <laughs> We're talking about Nightshade later. <laughs> <laughs> You know, because I mean that you know, saying random references. Like, oh, we want you. We want you to get the, see your money faster. Well, nothing's faster than you giving me a check today. Yeah, is you know, is basically. Yeah. But I mean, it can sound really nice though. Is the problem, and it can cover up for some real uh, financial um, problems that the company is facing. Because if they don't have to give anyone a check up front, then they can literally just give you money when they have money as you know each book sale happens and i think we've all seen those companies that might just be playing shell games with well, some it, money and it is also like i was saying before they have no investment yeah they also have if, no investment if i have especially like okay i'm not saying i love small presses i think there's some fantastic small presses out there there are They're also as we as we have hinted some very bad small presses out there um and i think one of the problems is that if they have no investment if they can literally just take your book convert it into a you know movie format to put it up on amazon kindle slap a cover on it and done yeah so they've invested 20 bucks mm -hmm. in your book yeah. well they'll make that they'll make that back with three sales they have no problem not doing anything with this because when your grandparents buy the book that's going to cover it so what was there's there's another there, there was a of... company that had that was doing that and they always show up at like the la festival of books it's it's uh god damn it write something I'll, I'll have to find it but that's exactly the kind of thing that they had been doing so they're saying well we're going to help you we're a publisher and they're really just vanity press yeah yeah and not even self-publishing but which is actually okay let's talk about that just for a second the term well, van, mm -hmm. vanity press yeah vanity I, press is very distinct from traditional yeah, press. yeah. The, the vanity press is um a publisher who Basically, you're you're you are getting your book sold and produced and all that, so that grandpa can buy a copy. Yeah. Uh, nobody's going to see it in a bookstore. It's not going to be marketed, and a lot of these these are scams. And, and you pony up money for most of that. Yeah, so this exactly. is an itemized You're bill paying thing. for it. Here's how much it's going to cost to buy your book. Here's how much it's cost to buy my copies. Here's how much is this, this, this. You send us a check for this amount. Basically, That's it's, a vanity I, the, the term I've realized, and I think this makes a lot of sense to people nowadays, you're basically paying somebody so you can self-publish. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is what yeah. a vanity press is. Yeah. Is, it's and then, Go. The difference between, um, and, and I think it's a very blurry line between the vanity presses, the traditional vanity, vanity presses, and these branches of publishers who say, well, we're not going to give you an advance on your royalty, but, you know, we're going to give you a 40% royalty instead of a 10% royalty. So we're going to give you more money and you're going to start making money sooner. Well, the problem, it, it's kind of like being asked it, it's still in that kind of vanity market globe because they're asking you to work for free they're asking you to write the novel yeah. do the edits that they want if they give you any edits like that's that's another thing with a publisher is that you know that there's going to be some there's going to be some um development and some copy edits so they're going to proofread the thing yeah. If there's no money being paid at all as an advance, then my sort of skeptics hat is then, well, how are you paying the editors and the copy editors and are there copy editors? Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, yeah. I worked with one 
one publisher I used to work with, I heard after, like after I was no longer dealing with them, horror stories, where they would actually, their editors were all freelancers. And one of the freelance editors got in touch with me because she was just pulling her hair out. They basically accepted the book on Monday, wanted her to turn edits around by Wednesday so they could give them to the writer on Thursday and put the book up on Friday. Oh, oh no. my God, no. Oh, wow. Which is, which For is anybody pro- listening, that, do- that can't yeah. happen. That, that, which, that's and that's happen. probably a whole other discussion. We're, we are supposed to be yeah. talking money more than anything. Yes. But yeah, there, there are a lot of different aspects of money that I think we're, we're yeah. kind of branching off we're, into. Yeah, we're touching yeah. a lot of. Um, it, it's a, the problem is it's a big subject. Yeah. Well, let's, yeah. And we got, it's complicated. With we've, got about, we've got about five minutes left on our video. Um, I don't know what do we what would be a good sum up for i mean as far as authors making money because obviously that is something people are talking a lot about right now of like i mean we we don't even want to go into piracy and how that affects things that's a whole meeting that's <laughs> um what a lot of times the advance is your money yeah you know? i was, I was actually gonna know. ask how yeah. many we all we all have multiple books mm-hmm. out has everybody earned out on at least one book or or uh, two for me well I, my, mine's mine's kind of interesting because there was uh my first one and then the second one was basically the start of the series okay. didn't really realize that because of how some things worked out but um so the first book has not earned out it's also been printed in a different format it's a different kind of cover you know, it and, doesn't look and like the rest that. of Eric Carter books. No, yeah. but no. it's actually like a precursor to it. Yeah. Um, Unconnected prequel. And that one has barely sold. And the others, I've, the first two Eric Carter books, I've earned out already. Nice. Um, the third one, if the pattern continues, I'll probably earn out in the next year and a half or so. Um, nice. But we'll see. Right. Well, well, that's the thing is, if you look at the look at the sales, the your initial sales, and then how far they kind of go. Yeah. The, the sequels never quite make as much money as yeah. the first one. But every time you get a sequel out, it bumps the first book. Sale. Oh yeah. It I bumps that out, whole lineup. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I earned out on Generation B, the first one. I'm so, I'm like eighty bucks away to earning out on number two. It's so close. So we should and, buy a few copies. Someone we should all buy a couple copies. Yeah. Which, one's book, which one's book two? <laughs> and uh, number four had the lowest advance. And really, that's getting cl- also kind of close to earning out. So that's kind of sweet. But yeah, number one, the sales are... Oh, you know, my editor said this to me. She said, the sales on number one will always be your best sales for the series. Everything else no longer, no matter how long it's out, it's diminishing returns. But every new book that comes out, bumps number one so that's kind of why they you know sometimes they'll put they'll uh green light a number 15 even if they know it's not going to get much because they know it's going to bring a bunch of sales back for number one and that's good Mm -hmm. for them and you so kind of cool the for me the owl series was done in two different contracts so the first two books and then the second two books um and same amount for for all four books Uh, that's something Um, we we didn't even talk about like Joint group we did it. No. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. the first contract earned out quite well. Money part so two. I, it earned out years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Two but, of infinite. Um, yeah. I'm sorry, and, Christy. And go I'm, ahead. No, no. And I'm, I'm, I like you, Stephen. Um, I'm also with the second contract. If things continue over the next, you know, couple of years, that'll earn out. You know, not too, not too far in the future. Um, my audibles, which were done, this is a whole rights issue, but my audible contracts, um, which were separate deals for the Owl series and for my Kincaid series, oh. have not earned out. But that's a different kind of story. Uh, and Kincaid, um, because Kincaid was my second series, I got, um, I think I got a total of about twenty-four thousand total for the four owl books. So, um, 6,000 a book. Uh, and I got, I don't think, I don't know because it's Canadian publisher. I don't know if I'm allowed to say how much I got for the second one, but 
Ten million. Uh, it, no, yeah, I would. Yeah. <laughs> for, I wouldn't for, be our, here. for our purpose. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I got I got substantially more for okay. um I you know I got substantially more for the Kincaid series. You um, two Tim Hortons restaurants. Maybe because I proved I could hand in books. That's possible. That mm. might have been part of it. We mentioned that. Uh, that one hasn't earned out yet. It might in, you know, in the next year or so, but um, the last time I checked, not yet. So I, yeah. I'm looking at the the timer on, on this. This says we got two minutes. So just really quick, wanted to toss this in here as comparison. Um, I've done media tie-ins. Uh, I did a novella, 50,000 words, for the TV show Heroes Reborn, which nobody saw, um, it was like it, they, it was a blip. Yeah, it was, it was like done as a mini season, series. Okay. Yeah, one season, five um, years later, or something like that. They paid me flat seventy five hundred nice. for fifty thousand. Ab- oh, absolutely flat. Nice. That is the that yeah, is the really most good. I have the mo- most I've made for the least amount of work. Yeah. And what's interesting about yeah. that is because it was fronted by TV money. Mm. And yeah. TV money is drastically different. My, I have from, done, I've done one tie-in book. I did an X Files book, or I did, I did a short story in an X Files oh. book. I got paid as much for that short story as I got for my first book advance. <laughs> yeah, I got so for the first three books, I got seventy five hundred dollars per book. That was my first contract. I, it was a nice. separate contract for number four because that was kind of their Hail Mary on the series. And I got 5000 for that book, which given the sale. Which is I still thought, really good. It, I thought it was fair. Uh, the yeah. agent I was talking with at the time was like, that's low. And I was like, that's good. That's mortgage money for me. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, maybe we should do a money part two sometime. We absolutely okay. should. We, uh, we, we should. We should do so many things. Thank you all, as always.